Hey guys, Tyler, aka Show Me Fly Guy. Today we're tying a fly that looks a little like a dragonfly nymph, a little like a bait fish, probably more like a bait fish. Basically, it's a woolly bugger with a dubbed body and dubbed head. Um, I've had lots of luck on with this fly this summer on largemouth bass, white bass, bluegill, and hybrid bluegill. And if I can make a nickel off of turning in bass, I never worry about the price of gas. I'd be wheeling and dealing and sitting there reeling them in. All right. It doesn't look exactly like anything, but it looks a little like everything. It just kind of looks alive, uh, has good sink rate, and is going to sink with its tip up, or point up. Uh, when I tie in the dumbbell eyes, I like to do five wraps on one side, five on the other, and then do some crisscrosses, um, do some figure eights on top and on the side. When you're doing them on the side, it kind of looks like a helicopter. The tail is going to be the length of the hook. I tie it in from behind the eyes to give it a little bit more bulk and body and a consistent shape. You're gonna want some olive grizzly hackle, and everything's olive on this fly, the olive tail, the olive dubbing, and like I said, the olive grizzly hackle. This is on a 3X long streamer hook. I'm tying on size six, and I'm using small bead chain eyes. Um, I like to tie in the tip of the feather to kind of give it a little bit of a taper. As you get deeper into the feather, the, the fibers get longer and their fiber is going to get longer closer to the head where the head is usually the biggest part of a bait fish it seems like as far as the dubbing goes uh, i use wax thread so i don't need to use any any wax or anything like that i use a little bit of saliva that helps kind of bind up some of the fibers in the dubbing and you could do this in a flashier color but i figured you know on, on a dark cloudy day all olive is probably the way to go. And, and like I said, I've had some good luck on this on, on cloudy days um, in clear water, stained water, doesn't matter. You're gonna want to palmer your hackle forward, give it a collar if you want. You'll probably notice in the photo that there's a little bit more fuzz towards the head on that particular fly. I got into a little bit of the fuzz on the hackle and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, that'll create a little more bulk and give it a little bit more action. This one has a little bit of a collar, just doesn't have the fuzz that that's deep in the hackle feather. As far as the head goes, you're going to dub again, same material. Uh, I crisscross on the bottom, I crisscross on the top. You're just looking to get full coverage here, no gaps. It just looks like a good, consistent, clean head. Uh, as far as rotary vices go, you don't have to have a rotary vise. Uh, as far as using that option very often, I don't, but I got to tell you, when it comes to dumbbell eyes or bead chain eyes or anything like that, it is a really, really useful tool. So I'm going to turn it over, give a couple crisscrosses below, a couple crisscrosses above, and just kind of, kind of taper it down to a point. I'm going to whip finish. You can whip finish once. You can whip finish twice. I usually do twice. You can do it 37 times if you're neurotic and worried about the fly falling apart. I use a tool because I can't do the uh, little finger whip trick finger whip finish trick thing. There you go, there's your fly. Here's proof that it works on white bass. Thanks for watching. Details about the fly are in the description in case you missed them. Thanks guys.